Kia ora. Welcome to Oho Ake Books. My name is Farayu Swaisander. Uh, this is an addendum to my uh, Galactic Family Ties video. I wanted to continue the story of my experiences with Matariki, my Galactic Family, my star family. Uh, I didn't want to make it into too long a video, so I wanted to make it into two videos. So this is the second part. Now mind the weather here in Wellington is blowing 130 kilometers an hour outside. The wind is, is blowing this rain that's also coming down horizontally. So if you hear banging in the windows, cracking and things moving, it's because the wind is moving the entire house. Welcome to Wellington. I need to move somewhere else. The wind's driving me crazy. But the same summer of 1996-97, very close to when I had my first experience with uh, coming to terms with Matariki and finding, well, having Barbara Marciniak's book, Bringers of the Dawn, come into my life and changing my life in so many ways. I went to a festival called Flight to Light at Fox River on the west coast of the South Island. And uh, when I went down there to this festival, uh, I didn't expect anything. It was late January, west coast of South Island can be quite treacherous in regards to the weather, but in January it was, the weather was amazing. The festival was even more amazing. And going down there, I went down, I got there uh, and one of my Māori mentors turned up down there, very spiritual people, and we built a sweat lodge next to the Fox River, which is icy cold, <laughs> and which is perfect for that particular reason. And for three days I spent, of the festival, most of the time I spent in the sweat lodge with my Māori mentors, going through some enormous initiations. The last day of the festival, which was a Sunday night, I, my friend Ratu, uh, and I went off to walk over onto a, an island which was near off the coast of Fox River, next to the Fox Beach, Fox River Beach. And it's like a, a mound with an empty cave underneath it. We climbed onto the back side of the mound, watch the sun go down. And uh, I said to him, oh look, I've got something in my pocket here, I think we should have it. So I pulled out this fat fruity, um, which was two hits of acid, really strong acid and two pieces of paper, and I said, let's have half each. So we had a piece of one, we had a full tab each. I gave him a tab, and we had a tab, and we ate it, and we didn't say much at all. We watched the sun go, sun start to go down, and uh, I was tripping. <laughs> so was he, pretty hard when the sun was starting to go down. We could, pff, a blaze across the west, across the horizon, out to over the Tasman Ocean, Tasman Sea, I should say. <sighs> pretty spectacular. Uh, and the colors and the illumination was off the charts. And he put a hand on my shoulder and turned to me and said to me, it's time for you and Matariki to connect. Now I hadn't told Ratu anything about my experiences with Matariki that summer. Nothing. He just knew. And he um, said, it's time for you and Matariki to connect. He got up and walked off by myself and I was just getting onto twilight. And I reached out across the horizon, even though I know that Matariki rises in the east. I reached out towards the horizon and said, I'm here. I'm here. Find me. The moment I said that, there was a flashbulb, which I call a flashbulb in CE5 uh, protocols. A flash across the sky, like a flashbulb of a, like a camera going off. A flashbulb across on the horizon. And the moment I saw it, I felt the energy right away hit me in my heart chakra and my body had this sensation of a tingling electromagnetic spider's web kind of came over my body, my entire body. And I felt this tingling go through all my circuitry, all my nervous system, all throughout my endocrine system, through my fascia, my muscles, my bones, my blood, everything went through me and I felt this calmness, this complete and deep calmness come over me and the sense of grounding and compassion and just heart-opening love came over me. I got up eventually from where I sat, I walked down into the cave underneath, there was a fire in the cave below me. People sitting around the fire talking, I said hello to them all and I walked off to the festival which was still going. I had a boogie next to the beach, next to the, well the stage was next to the beach. The beach was here, the stage was here. It was a big grassy kind of flat paddock. I guess we call it. I had a boogie with some friends there. 
I walked off to find Ratu. And it wasn't a big area, it wasn't a big space. But I walked off to find him and I found him sitting by the river bend on the other side of the bridge, the, the bridge of the Fox River, you pass over the bridge to go to the, further down the west coast of South Island. So I passed over the bridge, walked over to where he was, his camp, there was a person who was camped over there on the other side of the river called Patrick. I didn't know this guy. I too said, this is Patrick, this is Far. I too, Patrick, Far. So we met each other. And then I sat down with Ratu and Patrick and Ratu would tell, was telling stories, amazing storyteller telling me about Matariki, telling me about Patrick, telling me about his experience at the festival, telling me about every, just telling stories in general. I was sitting there drinking, drinking tea with this cat, Patrick, I'd never met before at the festival, who had his own tent there, had a little fire there, it was beautiful. I had drinking tea, just talking. And I remember looking at Ratu thinking, like, how did you know about my connection with Matariki? How did you know this? How did that, how is that possible? I never asked them. At the Festival of Possibilities in 1997, which was in March, early, second week of March, 97, I met the catalyst for my, mem for my memory and my awakening to know of my lifetime on Atlantis and my name, Farayus, and that lion. But I knew her as Moonbeer. I knew her as Moonbear because when I first saw her sitting opposite me in the hall during one of the seminars, I saw her, even though she looked very different than what I'm about to describe to you, I saw a Native American woman, a First Nations woman, Plains Indian, uh, long hair, walking through a field of grass, walking through the grass with her hands like this. I was like, wow, she doesn't look anything like that. But that's what I saw. I was drawn to her. Uh, in a way that was very energetic. She, my soul was calling to her. So eventually her and I became lovers. Uh, and I went to Australia with her, to Melbourne with her, because she was gonna go to Germany to do Zen therapy, a form of deep tissue and body work, um, healing body work. Now it was her path and not mine. I realized that when I got on the plane and left Auckland in May. 97. Before she left to go to Germany, we made love one more time. And when we made love, and I was about to have an actual physical ejaculation because I've had many, many internal orgasms during my lovemaking with her because I was very astute in my tantric, tantric practice. And in that final orgasm, I lent, I, my, my spirit shot through my chakra system from my lower chakras up my spine out through my crown chakra i remember being instantaneously instantaneously in space looking at matariki up close looking at the Pleiades star system not just the seven stars but the entire star system i remember seeing it i remember hearing welcome home and then boom, back in my body again and i'm having this physical experience of this a man's ejaculation and I'm looking at her in the eyes and she's like where did you just go <laughs> I explained to her what happened to, what happened to me incredible experience many years later in 2002 2003 I came back to New Zealand from from being abroad for seven years living abroad in Australia Southeast Asia and Canada for four years I came back to Aotearoa New Zealand and when I first arrived back here I had a very strong vision, strong vision. And I knew right away when the vision came to me where it had come from, Matariki. That vision became the book that I wrote called With Pablo Wairua, part of my self multidimensional existence, became the book known as All Roads Lead to Parihaka. And in that book, I give that vision clearly. I, tell, I say what that vision was. And it was so poignant to me back then, but it seemed ridiculous because what I was seeing was so far from reality. But today in 2021, I can see that that vision has began to manifest in our society, incrementally, and began to manifest. 
not in the same way that I describe it in the book, in the short story, but the, the, the message behind it and the, and the, the outcome behind it, I see it manifesting in our society in 2021 in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And I feel as though my star family, Matariki, was responsible for giving me that vision. And since that time I got that vision in 2003, I've had many more experiences with Matariki, many more blessings, many more connections, many more moments where I have realized that my star family is with me always, wherever I go. And it's something to look forward to for me, to go back to at some point. I can go back there whenever I want to, uh, by simply have my intention, and setting my intention from my heart to, to connect with my family there. But when my body and I part ways, the first place I want to go back to is Matariki. Thanks for watching, I truly appreciate it. Matewa. I'll see you again soon.